Good morning. I hope everybody can hear us here this morning. Um, welcome. And we want to make sure that uh, all your questions are answered today about navigating your financial aid offer. Can everybody see me okay? Um, look in the question and the Q&A map and uh, can you see the navigating your financial aid offer all right? Awesome. Okay, well, I am just going to go ahead and begin this presentation and welcome. Uh, congratulations on being admitted to Whitman College. We are excited that you are here today to learn a little bit more about your financial aid offer. Feel free to ask any questions um, through the Q&A box, just like some of you would, have already found. Really appreciate you responding that you are hearing my message. Um, Know that this session is being recorded. So if you want to go back and take a look and refresh yourselves on anything we've said, feel free to go back and do that. It'll be back on the admissions site here shortly after the presentation. Um, if you have logged on to your admissions portal already, you may be able to see your financial aid offer. And if you haven't, now's a good time to do it as soon as we get done. All right, so one of the things um, that we wanna make sure that uh, we can hear you, but we can't see you. Okay. Well, I'm gonna keep going. Um, at least you can see the presentation. And um, I am Sandy Henry. I am the Director of Financial Aid here at Whitman College. And we can see me now. Awesome. Thank you guys for chiming in. Really appreciate that. Um, one of the things we want to make sure that you get out of this uh, presentation is that we really want you to ask questions. So navigating financial aid, we know is one of those things that is new for many of you. And it is definitely one of those things that doesn't come natural for any of us. It's definitely a learned skill. So please ask questions. We will answer. Um, we've got some wonderful staff online to add to your questions as we go through the Q&A box. And I'll also be answering those, some of those questions as we go. And if any of you have been following Instagram, you may have also seen that uh, those boxes for your admission just went on the truck yesterday. So it's an exciting time. So um, I'm in the Office of the Financial Aid uh, Services here in Whitman College. Um, we're located in the Memorial Building. There is our information if you want to get a hold of us via phone and email. It's finaid at whitman.edu. And it, we're also in the directory. It's also on your admissions letter and everything that goes along. So we're going to talk a little bit about the understanding your offer letter. So you've seen, hopefully, in your student portal, your offer letter already, and you'll be getting a hard copy when you get your admit box here shortly. And some of the components that are in your offer letter are things that you're going to see pretty much with every offer letter that you receive from any college. It's going to include the estimated cost of attendance, your scholarships and grants that you've been awarded, loans and any work study or on-campus employment that's available to you, and then kind of the next steps and what you need in reviewing your financial aid offer. So estimated cost of attendance, let's talk about that a little bit. Every college in the nation is required to basically provide cost of attendance. And they are always gonna break it down into usually two different areas. So direct costs, then those are costs that you're gonna pay directly to Whitman and then indirect costs that aren't necessarily things that you pay directly to Whitman, but things that you need to think about as a student and families that you pay that you didn't pay directly to the college, but you're going to need to basically think about how to afford those. The estimated cost of attendance is tuition and fees, which is a direct cost that you'll pay to Whitman. Food and housing, if you're living on campus, is another one of those direct costs that you're paying directly to Whitman. And then two other things that we build into your financial aid budget are books and incidentals. And those are indirect costs. Those are things where you don't necessarily pay to Whitman. You could if you wanted to do a charge at the bookstore. But a lot of times students find book purchases elsewhere as well. And then incidentals, you're always going to need a few things while you're here at college. 
Travel is also another thing that we build into our budget that is an indirect cost. So we wanna make sure that you're thinking about what it's gonna to cost to travel from place to place. And what we do here at Whitman is we actually adjust that travel allowance a little bit based on the state of residence. So something always to think about. So moving on, um, grants and scholarships. So one of the things that you will receive from your college offer, um, you will see any grants or scholarship gift aid, meaning that they don't need to be repaid. And you may see that on your financial aid offer that you've been provided, that there might be more than one or two different types of grants and scholarships. So they can come from different sources. Some are common Whitman scholarships. And then this year, we kind of had to group things a little bit differently. So because FAFSA has been delayed, you're gonna see need-based scholarships and grants kind of lumped together in one component on your need-based offer. So here's kind of a look at what that looks like a little bit. So more information about need-based scholarships and grants. So we all know FAFSA has been delayed. Um, I know some of your questions may be, so when are we gonna get to see our FAFSA? When are we gonna see what that contribution is or that student aid index? Um, we have not received any FAFSAs yet. We have been told by the Department of Education that we should receive them mid-March. So what that means for mid-March is we don't really know. We're hoping to have those start released um, to the colleges. It doesn't mean we're gonna actually see them at that time. We're hoping that we can actually access those by the first week of April. So uh, we will inform you as soon as we get that information and hopefully by probably the first week of May is what we're kind of hoping for. Don't hold me that date, but it's definitely something we're striving for. If FAFSAs are released, we're going to try and convert those line items for you so that way you know exactly what need-based scholarships and grants are built into your offer. So if you have that need-based scholarship and grants offer, know that um, that's the bottom line amount and that's going to remain the same. So if you take a look at your screen and you, know, you see that achievement scholarship or you have a need-based scholarship and that total amount equals $50,000, when we update that after we get your FAFSA, you're gonna see that achievement scholarship because we know that's a Whitman offer. And then that other line item that you see right now, which is need-based scholarships and grants potentially, we're gonna break that out into the other grants that you actually have qualified for based on your FAFSA. And then of course, the Whitman need-based scholarship if you've qualified for that. So just know that our goal with using, using the CSS profile has to really give you a bottom line amount that will remain the same that you can count on going into this um, FAFSA season. So we really appreciate your patience. Um, Department of Education, I know, is doing their best to provide a FAFSA that is going to be easier for students. And I know you probably haven't felt that yet this year. Um, and I know that uh, you will be receiving something from Department of Education with your FAFSA as soon as they process those. So hopefully we'll all get them about the same time and we can all look at the same information. So what do you know about your scholarships and grants? So some scholarships and grants renew automatically each year, while others require you to reapply each year to renew them. So some of the things that we look at, at here at Whitman are your achievement scholarships. If you have one of those, they renew automatically each year as long as you remain in good standing your talent scholarships. If you have received uh, something for art or music or theater, or dance, those renew automatically each year as long as you are continuing to participate um, according to the terms of the scholarship. So as long as you're still part of the art or music or theater or dance programs per se. So need-based scholarships and grants amounts are recalculated every year based on your updated financial aid forms. So every year we will go ahead and make sure that when we receive your FAFSA and your CSS profile, that that need-based component from Whitman is adjusted accordingly. So loans and work study, um, on-campus employment. So loans and student employment are options to help pay remaining costs. So your offer letter outlines loans and employment options and then calculates the final yearly cost um, for you kind of factoring those in. So on the screen, you can see 
one of the things that you probably have seen in your admissions portal if you've looked up your financial aid brochure, and that is kind of how that breaks down, kind of helps you take a look at what those costs are and divide them by two and what it would look like for um, FAFSA and um, your CSS profile for fall and spring semesters. So let's move on to that. So what do you need to know about your federal student loans? You're not required to take out loans. Um, they are an option to you when you submit your FAFSA. Federal student loans are student loans offered by the Federal Department of Education. No credit check is required. So students, those are at your um, disposal anytime you would like to use them. And then by completing your FAFSA each year, you'll have the ability to borrow the loan amount that is included in your financial aid offer letter. So once you have access to your FAFSA, you'll receive an updated um, financial aid update email from us regarding your eligibility for either subsidized and or unsubsidized loans. So some of you may have done some of your financial aid um, counseling at your high schools to kind of learn what subsidized loans are, what unsubsidized loans are. And subsidized loans are basically the loan that does not accrue interest until after you graduate school. Unsubsidized actually accrues interest once you take the loan out. So Rest assured, it is one of those things that as we go through your financial aid offer that we want to make sure that you understand is that the only thing that will change in your financial aid offer will be the specific makeup of your financial aid when it comes to that need-based aid and grants line item. The bottom line amount will remain the same. And that's the beauty of what we've been able to do with our CSS profile this year. So to receive your loan offer in future years, you'll need to resubmit the FAFSA annually. And loan amounts are always based on the year you're in college. So you're going to see that they do change year over year. For any direct loan that you accept, you're not going to be required to start repaying them until you've been out of school for six months or after you graduate college or, or drop below half time. And those are federal documented regulations that uh, your loan servicers will continue to um, send you emails and make sure that you understand what um, is happening with your loans and how to manage them as you take them out if you choose to take them out. All right, so more information about federal student loans. One of your best tools as a student is studentaid.gov. And I know this year it's probably been a little bit challenging as FAFSA has been changing. However, this tool is updated as uh, Department of Ed updates it. And this is an amazing place for you to go and basically take a look at all of your federal financial aid. It's where you're going to go to do your FAFSA every year. It's also going to be where you go and do your loan processing and look at grants, look to see who your loan servicer may be. So it's a really great tool for all college students and we definitely recommend as you go through that process. Okay, so what do you need to know about work study or on-campus employment? Work study and on-campus employment is an option for students with financial need. So having work study or on-campus employment in your financial aid offer gives you a priority in finding on-campus jobs. So all of the employers on campus basically look at work study students first. They try and hire work study students because they know that that has built been built into their financial aid offer. And they wanna make sure that students have the ability to really have the best opportunity at finding a job on campus. So there's all kinds of jobs on campus. So research, tutoring, being a tour guide, and so many more. We have a, a student here in the financial aid office that helps us as do many offices on campus. And you know, the one thing I can say as uh, a department and watching how students really work here at Whitman is the offices work with you and they work with your time schedules and they really work with you to try and find a job that works best for you and try and do it between classes or after class. So an on-campus job is an amazing opportunity and it gives you that connection as well. So on-campus jobs are not guaranteed though. So it's one of those things that we encourage students to begin their job search early um, as possible. And how do you do that? So finding a job on campus, we have a portal called Handshake that students will, can go on to and actually look for work study jobs. 
Uh, everybody on campus posts their work study jobs here as well as non work study jobs. So if there's internships and other things that you'd like to take a look at. And if you're interested in that, I'd start looking at it this summer, start looking at the jobs that are available. Uh, Whitman's Community um, Career Community Engagement Center is kind of the CCEC as we call it. And they can help you apply for jobs. They can help you create a resume. And it's one of those things where the early you start looking for a job, the more chances you have of finding them. And I would really encourage students to apply for as many jobs as you can as soon as you start seeing them post up on Handshake. Typically we start seeing those posts during the summer. So I would definitely start looking and start seeing what works for you. So other work study details for on-campus employment. So our maximum work study or on-campus employment amount that we build into your financial aid package is $3,000 a year. So students take a think, just think about how much that is. It may seem like a big number, but with Washington's minimum wage at $16.28 per hour this year, students can earn that, that $3,000 by working just six to eight hours a week. So, you know, if you're thinking, gosh, you know, I don't know if I'm going to have enough time for a job. This is a really nice look at, you could spread out six hours over the course of, you know, when you get out of class in the afternoon, spend a couple hours working a work study job and you'll have plenty of time for study after. So it is one of those where we highly encourage you to, um, Seek those jobs out early and find something that works for you. So while other forms of financial aid like scholarships, grants, and loans are given to a student in a lump sum to cover costs and work study, on-campus employment funds are earned over time. And so just like a job that you would have off campus, wages are paid to students uh, every month as part of the payroll process. And it's all based on the rate of pay for the position and how many hours you work. So really similar to any job that you might have off campus. And off campus jobs here in Walla Walla are also available. So a lot of different options for students to find a way to kind of fill that work study gap. All right, so you've, you've have you reviewed your offer? Now what? Um, what kind of questions do you have or concerns? You're looking at your financial aid and you're like, okay, I don't know what to do. Well, we're here to help you. So if you have any questions related to your scholarships or your grants, your loans, your work study, contact us here in the financial aid office. We are more than happy to assist. If you have questions about your need-based aid, reviewing your financial aid forms, um, before contacting us, you might take a look at your financial aid forms, see if the numbers that you had entered for your CSS profile are correct. I know you can't do that with your FAFSA yet, so um, bear with us on the timing of that. Once you receive your FAFSA and show that it's been processed by the Department of Education, at that time that we've been told you can go in and take a look at it, make corrections if needed. So I know some of you may have you know, known that you made a mistake, once you get that notification from Department of Education, you should be able to go back in and make changes at that time. So just word of advice there. So a couple of things that we wanted to make sure you knew about as far as timing and kind of next steps is the annual invoice and payment financing options. So in the summer, you'll receive an invoice from Whitman's business office for the fall semester outlining your direct costs and the balance due after your scholarships and any loans that you've accepted are applied. So again, once we start making those changes to your financial aid offer where you have an actual loan of, of an unsubsidized or a direct unsubsidized loan, you'll be able to go in and actually accept those loans or decline those loans. That part will be your option. So the pieces that we wanted to make sure that you were aware of is to be able to go out to the business office um, website at the Whitman College, uh, whitman.edu, and kind of look and see what your payment options are. So you can pay the full semester balance in one payment if that works for you. You can pay semester balance in four monthly payments as part of a Whitman payment plan. And if you're curious about other payment plans or invoices, contact the business office. They are amazing people and they are more than happy to work with you on the different components that uh, you have questions about. Okay, so another piece for annual invoicing and payment options. 
Um, Parent plus loans. So one of the things that we don't build into financial aid offers are parent plus loans, but we also want you to know that they're available. Federal education loans for parents um, is a parent who is the borrower. Parents um, submit an application through studentaid.gov, just like you did as a student doing your FAFSA. And a credit check is conducted as part of the process. So it is one of those things for parents that provide a nice opportunity to kind of help students pay for college if that's an option that you'd like to pursue. So you can borrow up to Whitman's cost of attendance. So kind of what we were talking about earlier, uh, that cost of attendance that you have seen on your award letter. And it, it basically takes the cost of attendance less all other financial aid that the student has received. And that would be the amount that would be available for a Parent PLUS loan. And Parent PLUS loans work a little bit different than student loans. You can begin repaying them as soon as a loan has been dispersed, or you can defer the payment until six months after your student has graduated. It's really up to you. So that is one of the nice things with Parent PLUS loans is they do work a little bit different uh, to kind of go through that. Um, one of the things I just saw a question, can we make a Zoom appointment with a counselor to go over my financial aid offer? Absolutely. We would love to be able to see you face to face. Uh, if you are coming for spring into Whitman days, that is another opportunity where we can sit down with you. You can make an appointment with any of the financial aid staff here, and we are happy to go through that financial aid offer with you and kind of answer any questions that you may have. So studentaid.gov is the place to go for any of your federal financial aid. And then basically any other questions that you have about financial aid, contact us here in the financial aid office. All right. So I'm going to take a look and see what we've got on our Q&A and see what other questions we might have. Um, you're showing that uh, there's a question about Whitman College website. You've seen that international students receive 100% of demonstrated need. Is that the case for U.S. citizens as well? Well, you know what? It is for Washington residents. We've been very fortunate to have endowments that have allowed us to get to 100% of that demonstrated need for Washington residents. We're hoping that we can get there for all other students. We're not quite there yet, but we're getting close. So more to come on that topic. So is there a finance charge for payment plans? Um, we do have a finance charge in the business office. Uh, I believe it's 1%. So it is one of those things that I would work with the business office and you know, talk to them about what that might look like for you and see if what's the best option for you. All right, let's see what other questions do we have for you. Um, you completed the FAFSA, but not the WASFA. Should I do that now? So FAFSA is for U.S. citizens. The WASFA is for non-U.S. citizens, but Washington residents. So that is one of the things that kind of differentiates the two. So one of the things that we look at when it comes to financial aid is really um, your FAFSA and your CSS profile. And then if you are not a U.S. citizen, your WASFA if you're a Washington resident. So we will look at all of those components and build those into your financial aid as we receive that documentation as soon as it's available. All right, let's see what else you guys have out here. Are out-of-state students allowed to establish residency in Washington? Well, you know what? The beauty of um, Whitman College is we don't have non-resident tuition. So residency or non-residency, your tuition remains the same the whole four years that you're here. So that is a really nice opportunity for um, Whitman College and our Whitman students. So let me see what else you guys have. Oh, goodness. More questions? Keep them coming. I'm looking. All right. So um, how is the interest factored in, factored in for a Parent PLUS loan? So right now, the fixed interest rate, I believe, on a Parent PLUS loan is 8.05%. And it does act like an unsubsidized loan. So interest does start occurring for Parent PLUS loans as soon as each disbursement occurs. So one of the things I would really take a look at is studentaid.gov, go in to take a look at that Parent PLUS loan night item and really kind of pay attention to 
what's happening with that component. Um, look at how the interest is accruing. Look how often you can make payments. Look at any deferment options. The thing about the Department of Education that you're gonna see about studentaid.gov, our payment options change. So if you've logged into or signed up for one payment opportunity as a parent or even a student, once you graduate, those can change. So there's different opportunities that you can utilize for your federal student loans. All right, let's see what else you guys have for me. All right, is there any way to apply for need-based aid now or is the offer, the Whitman Scholarship that I already got, what I have to go with? Is there any way for me to get a need-based scholarship? You know what? There is. So it's one of those things where we would recommend that you take a look at your financial aid offer. If you forgot to apply for need-based aid and you think you may apply, you can apply now. We can't guarantee that we'll be able to do anything additional for you on a need-based aid. Uh, it will all depend on what financial aid is still available. That is uh, kind of a first come first serve basis when it comes to need based aid. And um, we will sure try hard to find endowments that match you. But again, um, if you didn't apply for aid and you think you may apply, I'm sorry, for need based aid and you think you may qualify, uh, definitely get in a CSS profile to us and we'll see what we can do. All right, let's see what other questions you guys have for me. If I decide to take a gap year, how will that impact my financial aid offer, which includes talent scholarships? That is a really great question. So we we, we can definitely defer your financial aid. Uh, talent scholarships, I believe that that's something that we can also defer for you for a year. And it is one of those that you just have to notify um, the admissions office and go through those components with them for any deferment that you might want to take gap year. Uh, so that way we can document everything and be ready for you when you do come. That is one of the nice options here at Women. All right. So as far as need-based aid, someone's asked a question about the FAFSA, you know, kind of we have to wait for it to be released on need-based aid. You don't have to wait. Uh, that is the beauty of a CSS profile. And uh, we use both documents when we package financial aid usually. But this year with the delay of FAFSA, we have used the CSS profile and use potentially your tax returns uh, to basically make sure we've got the right information and we can package you accordingly. So if you forgot or you went, oh my goodness, you know, I still want to apply for need-based aid, we would highly recommend that you do your CSS profile and get that into us as soon as possible. Um, again, we can't guarantee anything, but we'll sure try and see if there's any endowments that might match you that we still have available. Okay, let's see what other questions you guys have for me. All right, what's the typical tuition increase year over year? Um, you know, that is something that... Um, has changed a lot with all institutions year over year. Every institution kind of takes a look at what the cost of living adjustments are, what the university needs are. And I know that here at Within, our president is very, uh, works very hard to try and keep tuition low and try not to increase as much as possible to keep it as affordable as possible for students and families. So. Right now, I think we've seen someone in the, in the ballpark of like three to 4%. And we hope to be able to keep it low just like that. Um, I know some of other institutions have been trying to keep it low and, and can't. So it's really what we're able to do year over year changes year to year. All right, so let's take a look. Um, what else do you guys have for me? All right. Well, I am going to, I'm not seeing too many other questions. Um, oh, here we go. Let's see. Um, is the International Student Scholarship guaranteed for all four years? What happens when tuition and housing increases year over year? So 
One of the beauties of need-based aid and international student scholarships is that when tuition increases occur and it creates a little bit more need-based aid, we will package you just like we have the first year, second year, third year, and fourth year. We'll make sure that those increases are covered based on the out-of-pocket expense that you started with or that you basically have qualified for with your new financial aid forms for the second year, third year, and fourth year. So that way you don't have to worry too much about those, those little bit of increases that happen. We wanna make sure students can still afford all of those components um, as they progress through their college career. Okay, so if you have a 529 plan set up, how does that get paid out? Um, does Whitman access it directly or do we just send money from our own? Um, are we limited to distributing any specific amount from it on a yearly basis? So one of the things I would say about 529 plans is they can differ. And so 529 plans are typically accounts that you've set up as a family or a parent or a student, and you would request the funds to be sent to Whitman for the amount each semester that you need to pay. Uh, as far as any limits that you'd have to look at your specific 529 plan to see, you know, kind of what's available and what restrictions apply. All right. So let's see. Are you saying that you were able to determine need-based aid um, based on uh, the um, CSS profile and the FAFS is not going to affect the need-based scholarship granted? That's correct. That's exactly what we are doing. So when we provided you need-based aid, we wanted to make sure that we could provide you with a line item that you could count on. And so in doing the CSS profile and creating that need-based aid line item, we have guaranteed regardless of what other grants that you may or may not qualify for, that you're still gonna get that amount. So that amount is guaranteed. I hope that answers that question. Um, it's definitely one of those that uh, we wanted to make sure that students felt secure in that decision as they entered this kind of crazy world of FAFSA this year and making sure that uh, they had enough funding and could basically walk away and go, okay, that's how much it's gonna cost. All right, so here's another one. What's the process for applying for additional need-based scholarships and grants to cover GAP? You know, um, it is one of those where not everybody has a gap. Um, it really depends on financial aid. Everybody has a different financial aid package. So I think one of the things that I've always told students, especially when we go out to high school nights, is every single one of you that I'm talking to right now has a different financial aid package. I know that's crazy to think about, but every family's circumstances are different. So it's one of those where Take a look at your financial aid forms, take a look at all of those components. And if you have questions, call us. It is one of those things that we're happy to have that discussion to kind of figure out what works for you, what doesn't work for you, what loans are available. Um, maybe you've gotten some outside scholarships that we don't know about yet and that we'll be factoring those in at a later date. That is another option as well. So we highly recommend you to contact us if you have any questions and uh, we can sure go through it with you. Okay, let's see what else. Okay, I'm not seeing too many extra questions. So um, I think um, on that note, if anybody has any future questions, um, we'd like you to um, give us a call at the number on your screen or email us at finaid at whitman.edu and we'd be more than happy to provide you with the answers to your questions, set up a Zoom call, uh, whatever works for you. We are happy to accommodate and uh, we're happy to help. And uh, welcome to Whitman and uh, go Blues. <laughs>